Okay, here's a, a little diagram I like because uh, I was sitting here in the wind last winter. It was a terrible winter, and I thought I'd make this diagram. And here we see two cells, okay? This is one cell. This is another. And over here we see a bunch of receptors. R is receptor. Each one is a protein with a sugar chain. The Y represents a sugar chain. We see receptors for hormones, a whole variety of different. Each one is a different receptor. The insulin receptor is different from the receptor for the male har sex hormones. The receptor for female sex hormones is different from that for the male, etc. There's a whole variety. Every almost every hormone has its own unique receptor. And when the hormone lands on the receptor, it stimulates chemicals that can send a message into the nucleus and turn on or off the activity of genes. And that's the way now we think of hormones acting, whether it be insulin or whether it be thyroid hormone or male or female sex hormones. They send messages across the surface membrane of the cell. Uh, uh, messages go to the nucleus, interact with specific genes, and turn them on or off, and that gives us the end effect of the of the hormone. Similarly, with drugs, we hold a whole variety of different receptors, growth factors, which are other molecules, neurotransmitters in the brain. David was talking about the brain. Uh, there's a whole variety of chemical molecules in the brain involved in brain activity. They have different receptors. In some cases, some toxins can interact with receptors. If we look in the middle here, the way cells stick together is through cell adhesion molecules. So this is a protein on one surface interacting with this cell adhesion molecule on the neighboring cell, and that holds the cells together. And in fact, changes in these molecules, for example, in cancer, we nowadays believe that cancer it's due to mutations in specific genes that affect growth, increase growth, but also affect the way cells interact. And if you have a mutation in a gene that changes the structure of this protein, these proteins will not interact as, as well as they do normally, and that can perhaps contribute to the way a cancer cell breaks off from a cancer and then spreads through the tissues and gets into the bloodstream and metastasizes. So there's a lot of study of cell adhesion, the phenomenon of cell adhesion, because normal cells in an organ such as the liver or kidney or brain stick together. But on the other hand, cancer cells often show diminished adhesion. And over here, on the right-hand side, we have a variety of glycoproteins in which, for example, a bacterium or a virus or a parasite can stick to the sugar chains. They have adapted to use the sugar chains, and uh, you might say, well, that's bad, but these glycoproteins, their function is not to provide sites for bacteria. It's just that the bacteria have uh, utilized uh, the sugar chains. But the important thing is if we can understand how the uh, how the bacteria attach, if it, let's say it's HIV, if we understand this interaction between the virus and the sugar chains, perhaps we can prevent it. Or if this is influenza virus, uh, we can perhaps prevent, develop a drug or a sugar molecule that will prevent this interaction. So it's very important to study these interactions of various microorganisms with sugar chains of surface glycoproteins. Right. You mentioned something about cancer. I just, uh, I just want to bring up this trivia real quick. Um, what, what we know is that 90% of all deaths due, due to cancer, 90% is due to one cell breaking away from the other, due, due to the metastasis, in other words. So, yeah, that's um, right. So, so it's important that cells stick together, and basically what, what you're saying here is that um, these molecules help the cells to stay together. If, if we, if and the problem with the, the, the study and research of cancer is, is that it is so difficult for them to understand how metastasis happens, and that's why they haven't really been able to get a handle on it. But the key is to help the body 
be able to do yeah. that too, in addition to what, whatever your doctor is doing with chemotherapy or radiotherapy. I think everything has to work together. Also, as you mentioned earlier, I don't want to oversimplify metastasis, but the immune system is very important in understanding the behavior right. of cancer.